Never truly understood the point of the Steam Deck. Its use case never met my needs, or I never had a need for it. I have a dedicated gaming desktop, a PlayStation 5, and a Nintendo Switch, which I haven't touched seriously since Super Mario Odyssey, maybe? I don't go out often, I don't travel by plane, train, or bus, I always choose my PC over a console, and I love to crank the in-game settings to the max, as well as play at high frame rates. That's something the Steam Deck simply cannot do. The Steam Deck has no exclusive or killer app that I can't already play. There's no need for me to have one, yet I bought one anyway. Like many people, I saw Valve was discounting the Steam Deck during the spring sale. Oddly enough, two days before the sale, I was already researching the Steam Deck as well as other portable gaming computers. I had no reason to believe Valve would discount the Steam Deck, and I even placed an order for one the evening before the sale. Thankfully, I was able to cancel the order and reorder at the discounted price. I purchased the 64GB model, as I had no need for the etched glass, and I was planning on buying a 512GB SSD to replace the EMMC drive, so storage was not a concern for me. I also was not expecting to be using the Steam Deck as much as I have been. After making my purchase, I began to do the neurotic dive into the world of Steam Deck. As I waited for mine to arrive, I quickly realized that certain things were not doable on SteamOS. Mainly for me, Xbox Game Pass. Thankfully with the Steam Deck being a computer, you can install whatever OS you like on it, customer or otherwise, for better or for worse. When my Steam Deck arrived, I had already received the Dbrain Kill Switch, case, travel protector, screen protector, and 512GB micro SSD. So I was ready to kit it out. My 512GB SSD had not yet arrived, however. I fired up the Steam Deck and was immediately greeted by the playful Steam Deck logo, and the setup was as simple as signing into or creating a Steam account. Once logged in, all your games in your Steam library just appear. No need to repurchase or import, it just works. I won't speak at length in regards to SteamOS and my experience with it, other than it was mostly good. I had heard some horror stories of Steam Deck at launch with bugs or features missing. Patches and updates were being doled out in the daily fashion as well. My lesson of the day with SteamOS though, I had no issues. I was able to install Halo Infinite, Jedi Fallen Order, and a couple of other indie games. Some games were marked as verified, some games were only marked as playable. Typically, a verified game will work with no issues and has been tested by Valve to be working on the Steam Deck. A game marked as playable may have some slight bugs or UI-related issues, such as small text, but is generally otherwise playable. All the games that I tried had run well and within my expectations, if not exceeding them at times. My internal storage and SD card had filled up quickly. Thankfully, my new SSD had arrived the next day. Thus, I began work on setting up Windows on the Steam Deck. Installation was as simple as installing Windows on any other computer. You will need a USB-C hub so you're able to plug in a keyboard and mouse, as well as a USB drive with a Windows installer on it. There are a lot of guides and methods in installing and setting up Windows on the Steam Deck, and you'll need the official Valve drivers for Windows as well. As a side note, tutorials had mentioned you may need to keep those drivers on the USB stick, because the Steam Deck won't have any internet access during setup. During my setup process though with Windows 11, it was able to grab some generic drivers and I was able to install over Wi-Fi no problem. Your mileage may vary. Once into Windows, there will be a few programs to install and things to tune. This is mainly to have the Steam Deck working similarly to the Steam OS. And if you want a more detailed guide, please follow the Bald Sea Line guide below. I would say the process is a little involved in getting it set up. This is not to the guide's fault though, it's just that Windows is obviously not made to run on the Steam Deck natively. Once everything is set up though, things are made to work similar to SteamOS. Button functions are included to bring up Task Manager, End Task, or bring up the on-screen keyboard, etc. Navigating Windows is a little janky using just the Steam Deck. The right touchpad acts as a pointer and clicking it in will perform a left click, and clicking the left pad will perform a right click. I stubbornly refuse to get off my couch and plug in a keyboard and mouse to make my life easier. Don't get me wrong, it's not impossible and I did everything just fine, but it's like using the back end of a screwdriver as a hammer. It'll work, it's just not as efficient. This would be similar to using desktop mode in SteamOS though. 
Luckily, there's a fix for that. Enter Play Night, the all-in-one game library manager. It can hook into your accounts and pool all of them into one easy-to-use launcher. And for my setup, I have my Steam, Xbox, EA, Epic Game Store, Ubisoft, and GOG accounts all tied into it. There's support for emulators as well. I have Yuzu and Ryujix, I believe, for Switch emulation. Uh, but they have a wide range of emulator support for various consoles. To my knowledge, the Steam Deck can emulate pretty comfortably up to GameCube as well as some Nintendo Switch games. Your mileage may vary, obviously. Uh, yeah, Play Night has a desktop mode and full screen big picture mode. And once I found a theme that I liked with some add-ons to make it more Steam-like, it was off to the races. Once everything is configured, powering on your Steam Deck will now launch into a console style menu. Play Night is referenced in the guide as well. I began to fill my storage with games I had played, as well as some I hadn't. There was no rhyme or reason to it. If I thought it would be cool to try in the deck, I downloaded it. In my less than a week with the deck, I had played through Hi-Fi Rush, Part of My Friend Pedro, Midnight Fight Express, Halo Infinite, Jedi Fallen Order, and a few retro games. Everything ran great, and whether it ran better than it would have on SteamOS, I can't say for sure, but it was as simple as that. I was hooked. I have now since bought a third-party dock so I can dock the deck to my main floor TV. I also opened the deck back up and repasted the APU with some Corsair XTM70 thermal paste. On my gaming PC, switching to this paste resulted in a roughly 5 degree drop in CPU temps, and while it did not do any extensive thermal testing, I'll keep telling myself it helps in the long run. I just love to tinker with it. I found out I was one of the unlucky ones and got one of the noisy Delta fans. It doesn't bother me much, but I did find the fan to be on the loud side just a touch. And the only reason I bought the better fan was to just give me an excuse to open it back up again. These are not things the average user would or even should do, this is just me going off the rails. I then found a program called Smokeless UMAF. This allows you to access additional settings you wouldn't have access to otherwise. In my case, I was looking for the voltage control and boost limits. I was able to undervolt my Steam Deck a little bit, by negative 20 millivolts on the CPU and negative 30 millivolts on the GPU. I also allowed the CPU to boost up to 3.8 GHz and the GPU to boost up to 1.8 GHz. This seemed to lower the temperatures a little bit, and I didn't notice any glitches or crashes. Your mileage may vary, and please know that you can end up bricking your Steam Deck using this tool if you push it too far. I will not detail how to use it in this video, but I'll leave a link to the GitHub below. If you would like help with it, please message me. Now that all my tinkering was done, I could finally get back to gaming on it. My experience with the Steam Deck from then on had been fantastic. Save for the few odd Windows bugs that I've gotten on my gaming PC before as well, your mileage may vary, I've seen other people have other issues as well, but mine's been mostly smooth. The thing about the Steam Deck is, it's the perfect mobile gaming device. Although I'm home and can easily go downstairs to my gaming PC, I find myself reaching for the Steam Deck just out of ease. Want to play a quick run of Dead Cells with your morning coffee? Steam Deck. Want to veg out on the couch playing your favorite game for the hundredth time? Steam Deck. Need to go out to the bathroom and forgot your phone? Steam Deck. It quickly took over my gaming habits. I wasn't playing on my 4K gaming beast, I was playing with a beast in its own right. And that's when I realized what the Steam Deck was to me. It was a backlog machine. I was stuck playing the same old games over and over before I got the deck. Once I got the deck and had all my games in one place, I realized that there are hundreds of games in my library, and I haven't played a lot of them, and finished shockingly few of them. It's the same old story, there was a good sale on Steam, Humble Bundle, or online deal you just couldn't refuse. Maybe play it for a bit, but quickly move on to something new or familiar. After realizing how many games I had left untouched, I decided to challenge myself to play through my gaming library backlog, using just the Steam Deck. This is not a completionist run, it is a challenge to play through the main story of the game. If I don't remember playing it or if I don't have the final level achievement, I will play it. 
This includes me playing games I know I have played on console but was stupid enough to buy it again for some reason. This however not will include doubles because I do have games on multiple different stores through either Epic Game Store free games or other means. I'll look into the performance of the game on the deck running on Windows. If I come across a game that does not work on the deck with Windows but does work on SteamOS, I will add it to a list and swap over to SteamOS to beat it at some point. I also talk about gameplay, story, and how the overall experience was on the deck, and if it was better or worse than playing on a dedicated PC. If I come across a game that the deck cannot run natively, then it will be added to a not playable on the deck list. I'm sure there'll be more stipulations to think about over the course of the challenge, but we will cross that bridge when we get to it. To close things off, if you were one of the people to purchase a Steam Deck during the sale, congratulations. To those who had bought it at launch or any time before, I get it. I get the hype around it at launch now, and the Steam Deck coming in at the price it did was and is still huge. Nothing can touch it in terms of price. There are competitors to the Steam Deck, and with the things heating up in the mobile CPU space, more competition will continue to follow. Till they can match the Steam Deck in price though, it will still remain untouchable. I'm glad Valve took the time to make such a great device. It's not without flaws, but if anyone could do it, it would be them. I can't wait to see all the new Steam Deck users and what they do with their devices. If you were one of the people that bought during the sale, how has your experience been so far? What's the driving force behind you purchasing it? And how do you see yourself using your Steam Deck? Thanks for taking the time to watch, and I hope you have a great day.